Mike, let's get right to it with your old team, the Cleveland Browns. Reports coming out that before the draft, the Browns fired the scouts that were high on Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz last night in Monday Night Football looked like the second coming of Roger Stallback. What the hell is going on with your old franchise? How does this happen? Well, I think what happened was there's a new administration, and this administration is based on analytics. It's, it's highly about the numbers. Now, when I was there, we commissioned a group of people to do research on what would make a great quarterback. Spent $100,000 trying to get involved with the analytics to try to come up with indicators. What does a guy do well? What makes a great quarterback? That process led them, I suppose, to Johnny Manziel because then I was fired. So I would assume they've kept that process going. And, and that what happens is scouts that don't like the analytics can become disruptive in the room. And I'm sure the Browns just wanted to make sure it was smooth and easy on the first draft. Hold on. The process leads them to Johnny Manziel, then leads them to RG3, leads them to think Carson Wentz can't play, then leads them to Cody Kessler, over Dak Prescott. That, well, I could, the only thing I would say different there is I'm not sure it led him to RG3 because I don't know what analytics you could look at to say, let's sign RG3. I think that was a Hugh Jackson call to say, hey, maybe I can revitalize this guy's career. But the analytics had to lead him to Manziel. That's why they, had, they were there. The analytics had to lead him to Cody Kessler. That's why they're there. No one in the National Football League thought that Cody Kessler was a third-round pick, including myself, and I was working for the New England Patriots. We thought he was a late free agent type player. The Browns saw a lot more in him as a player than most teams in the league did, and they select him at the bottom of the third. Remember, this is a team that kept the bulk of the draft picks. I think the only one draft pick isn't on the roster. So they're about their analytics, and they're about preserving their draft. Okay, when you go that far with the analytics, and tell me how a franchise works in terms of general manager, president, versus a head coach who is known as a quarterback whisperer. Who has more say-so, Hugh Jackson or the front office when it comes to draft? Well, this isn't really debatable because Sashi Brown, who's now the vice president in charge of the organization, has made it very clear he's in charge of the draft. So that is clearly the direction they wanted to go. Jimmy Haslam, the owner at the time, when I worked for Jimmy Haslam, it was run through the personnel. The coach had a say. He's changed dramatically in terms of the approach. He's trying this new approach. Can it work? I don't know. Analytics is a nice supplement to your draft. But remember this, Jason. It takes talent to evaluate talent. It isn't some one of those things that you can just say, oh, the numbers tell me this, because football is not all about a numbers game. And then the other reality is chemistry and culture play a huge difference in how we're going to proceed as an organization. And when you're just looking at numbers, you've eliminated culture and chemistry.